Good morning. I should have looked at the date today. Let me just take a quick peek here. It's Wednesday, March 25th already. Isn't that crazy? And I don't know about you, but today I want to talk about robotic bosses. Not so much in their positioning, but in how they interact with people. And so I've just I put on this song here to get us started for this morning. Mr. Roboto. I don't know if you remember this song. But let me add a question here while that's playing along. Let's see, do you have a robotic box? I hope you can hear that because it's like fun. Okay, so today's question is going to be, do you have tips to deal with a robotic boss? And if yes, please share. If no and you need some, I'm hoping that we're gonna get you hooked up today. Let me just turn this music off. This is like from the 80s. I have to tell you, that's my era. <laughs> okay. So what to do with a boss that is not human? Now we're not obviously physically saying that they're robots. That would be artificial intelligence and that's a whole different impact in the workplace, but we're just talking about a boss that maybe has those characteristics that are closer to artificial intelligence than they are to the human side. But in order to know that, we first have to figure out what is human. We do need to kind of define that in order to say, in order to say that my boss is not human. And according to science, I did a little bit of research on this. It's actually pretty tricky to define what a human is because we are not neatly in a scientific um, category. We don't neatly fit into a full category. We don't neatly fit into a biological or a psychological. We're kind of a mesh of several. But there are some essences and characteristics of being human that will help us to identify if our boss is lacking those characteristics. So we're going to talk about that. Now, if you're just joining me, don't, don't be shy. Hop in there on the chat. Let me know that you're here. Say hello, where you're watching from. And of course, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in there and I'll answer them at the end. Okay, I'm gonna bring my document up here forward. So the essence of being human. There are a few characteristics that we're gonna look for. One is that they have the ability to feel and to think. Now, it may appear that our bosses lack that in the workplace. We're not gonna talk about them outside of the, of the workplace, but if they can't show emotion, if they can't show that they can independently think, they might be acting like a robot. Another thing to be human is to express passion and compassion for ourselves as well as others. And to do that, we need to be able to communicate verbally and non-verbally. So those, that's the third characteristic. And then of course, we wanna have autonomy in our thought and in our actions. Uh, and to be aware that human is to be human is a dynamic state. It's not static, it's always evolving. And so those are just some of the characteristics. You could probably do several Googles in which, sorry, I just thought that was a message I needed, in which, You'll find multiple different characteristics, like being a part of a particular group or things like that. But in general, it's really about having the ability to relate to others and to understand others and selves in that relationship. So you might have a boss that is not human. Here are some things you want to look for. Are they fixated on outcomes, productivity, numbers, data, and that is all your conversations ever seem to revolve around? If so, let me know in the comments there. Um, that that is the case, somebody you are working with, and um, maybe you've got some suggestions on how you've dealt with that. I do have some tips for you, of course, but I'd like to always hear from you. Now, bosses that are focused on data kind of lose sight that there's a human factor behind the data, and they get so focused on those numbers because that's what their boss potentially wants, or that's how their productivity is measured, that it, you know, it, it innately becomes your problem. Second thing is, do they only ever talk to you when there is a problem? And they only ever focus on the issue and they give you the, the way to fix it as opposed to understanding the context of what's going on. Maybe their solutions don't match the problem. That they're so focused on this process, this protocol, this pathway, that they're unable to think outside of that. Outside of that. <clears throat> I seem to be a little tongue-tied today. I'm not gonna go through all, I have a lot here, but I'm gonna talk about a few more here. Do they lack empathy, sympathy, or any sort of an emotional response or connection when you bring issues forward? So for example, I will share a time in my past when I had an issue with daycare. I was unable to secure daycare for the hours in which I was being asked to extend my day. And it was a short-term problem 
hadn't happened before, but it was brand new, so I brought it to my boss and pretty much got a, I don't care, this is what you will do, make it work. So very, very rigid, and there was no flexibility in the approaches to attack the objective. And so very robotic in my mind, right? Not able to think, that's another characteristic that your boss is unable to think outside the boundaries. And you might hear things like, gosh, I cannot tell you, when I hear this, this makes my head spin. You're lucky to have a job. They don't treat you as a human. They don't care about your context. They don't, they're not worried about who you have to support. They're focused on you as an object to complete a task to get things done. So if you're working with a boss like that, you're probably noticing that there are higher stress levels in the workplace, probably a little bit of burnout, probably a lot of grievances, and high turnover. But this is your workplace, and maybe this is all you have for now, and you really have to make this work, so I wanna give you some tips. As we know, first of all, highlight this right off the top is we cannot change another person. Nada. You can influence how they interact with you though. So we're gonna attempt that first. And in order to influence them, that means you need to share with them what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what your needs are. So that means we need to have a meeting with this boss that is not human. Yes, we're gonna request a meeting. We're gonna share with them what we're seeing, how this is impacting us, and come up with some solutions. I always suggest you have a solution or two or three. Solution focused is best. Now, if that doesn't work, if you don't get the results you want, you may need to escalate your conversation higher. So this might be a senior supervisor or HR or filling in a grievance per the policy that you have available to you. After all, if they're gonna follow policy, you should follow policy too, right? Now, if you're not satisfied with either of those, you still do have some options. If you're in a if you're in an employee, if you're in an area where it is possible to request a new manager or to be, be traded to another department, I would certainly do that. And you can start, you can set that up as a non-threatening way, and you can just explain that you're noticing that you're having a hard time meeting the expectations, and you really want to be contributing to the workplace and that this might be a good fit for both of you to get what you need in the end. It doesn't have to be like, you suck, I want out of here. I mean, that's really what it is, but you can set it up so that the relationship remains intact because you never know when you're going to have to work with or under that person again in the future, and your best defense is a good offense. Now, if the request to transfer is not an option for you, then you have a couple options. You have to decide, one, can I stay in this environment? How much can I withstand? And how am I able to build up my resilience day to day to come back into this environment in order to provide for my family? That is a really personal decision. And some people will spend their years in a career that they are not satisfied with for that simple reason, and that is okay. Others will take the other option, and that is to simply look for another job and to leave. You do have the, in between those is take some time off. Maybe have some vacation days, I get it. This is not how you wanna use your vacation. It's not how I want to either, but if this provides you time to consider your current situation, if it gives you time to look at alternatives to come up with your pros and your cons list, it might just be what you need to refocus and put in the strategies you need to stay or go, whatever that answer will be. I have certainly done both in my lifetime. Now, as always, if you're looking for a download that's got a little bit more information, I will have this available in the Conquer Conflict group. So you'd have to sign into the group and there's a whole bunch of stuff in there for you. It's all free. It's there to help you manage your workplace situation, which ironically is going to help you also manage at home because the stress at work always carries at home. It's difficult to leave that at the door. Okay. Um... <laughs> Any questions? Uh, no questions. Two shares, awesome, thank you for sharing. If you do have questions and you're watching the replay, don't be shy, put them in there and I will still address them. I do watch for that to make sure that I'm helping you move forward in the way that you need to be to be safe emotionally in your workplace and provide. So I'll see you in the group hopefully where we can work a little bit more closely together. And until next time guys, make it a great day.